Hello, my name is Joel Z. Williams. I'm the author of Hard Knock, The War Mobbers. A lot of times people ask me to read a section of the book that I like and they ask me what, what, book, what part of the book do you like the most. There's so many different parts. I can't really just focus on one. But I thought I'd read this passage because I think it, it, it is a very interesting uh, understanding uh, a misunderstanding. It's representative of a, of a misunderstanding that most Americans, and I'd say, I would go as far as to say Westerners, have with radical Islam. And, and, and here in this scene is um, the antagonist of the book, the, the main bad guy of the book, it has been captured. He's a, a Muslim a fundamental uh, extremist. And he is being interrogated by the, the main protagonist, Terrence Pierce who is uh, the good guy of the book. So they're, they're in a room together and, and he's being questioned and he, the American posits the question to him, basically, what, what motivates you? Why do you do what you do? And I think uh, the, the, ter the terrorist answer, his name is uh, Tariq J Alim Jamal, the, he, he, his response, he's, he's a Saudi, uh, his response, I think, is is indicative of what you might hear if you were able to, to interview a member of ISIS or uh, Al Shabaab or uh, Abu Sayyaf. I think if you listen carefully, I think you'll see the hallmarks of it. This is in in uh, Jamal's voice here. You asked what motivated me, as if I had a personal choice in the matter. Only an American could even think about the decision to enter into jihad as a choice one is able to make for themselves. As a Muslim, I am compelled to fight you because your culture is destroying mine. So you're saying that you were drafted by the jihadists? Jamal sensed the interrogator's jest, yet ignored it and continued on in Arabic. Allow me to explain. When my father was a young child, he lived in the traditional Arab Bedouin way. As a son of a nomadic camel caravan leader and merchant, he prayed five times a day, every day. He did so not because he was an especially pious Muslim, but because during his childhood, there were no distractions from the din, the faith. There were no televisions, no electricity, no automobiles. Unlike the world my sons now face, back then a young boy had an easier path towards growing up and becoming a good Muslim. That was because people like me, the Ikhwan, Muslim Brotherhood, saw it to it that the teachings of the Prophet remained first and foremost in people's minds. They forbade men from smoking tobacco, wearing gold jewelry or silk clothing. They outlawed music dancing, and even the keeping of pets, anything that might be a diversion from the worship of the one true God. The Ikhwan rode from town to town to ensure that everyone lived in the same manner as the prophet and his companions, materially poor, yet rich with family, faith, and religious devotion. They were men of vision and commitment who had correctly foreseen the insidious dangers of Western decadence and they had struggled mightily to keep it away from their people. So you see yourself as a savior of your people's way of life, not just some guy willing to blow himself up because he disagrees with another religion. When a Shahid, religious martyr, blows himself up, he is not only rejecting your culture, he is attempting to preserve his own culture by participating in the ultimate form of protest. The roots of jihad are much deeper than you realize. It has only been 50 years since the time of my father's childhood, yet look how modern Islam has descended in just that short amount of time. Right now, even in my own country, your culture of consumerism has infected Saudi women and made them unsatisfied with the functional household appliances and utensils they already possess. Western-style consumerism has led many of my people into a perpetual cycle of debt, which is extremely shameful in my culture. Our women have become empowered by your culture's acceptance of women in the workplace. 
They now want to assert control over our households and our children. Many of these confused young women are now even dishonoring their families by participating in premarital sex and rejecting arranged marriages. You see, everything about your culture is a threat to the existence of our way of life. You must try to understand that I came to jihad because it is the only viable guarantee for our continued existence as a people. That's why I'm here in Afghanistan, because I need to be here. Like dry earth needs water. My name is Joel Z. Williams. I hope you will read my book. This is Hard Knock, The War Mobbers. I think it's a really good story. Thanks a lot for listening.